Alright, Shalom to the hopeful elect. First, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Waha, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, a great millstone. And salutes to Yaakim teaching this word to the hopeful elect. Right, um, this video, I'm going to be speaking about the Valley of the Dry Bones, right? Um, um, hey, that represents America, right? Uh, and uh, those of our people that have not awakened unto the truth, right, and their heritage, right, of the Holy Bible. So I'm coming back, you know, speaking about, you know, bringing out these scriptures, right, you know, the 12 tribes of Israel, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, right, our scattered seed, right, which are the, the bones, the dry bones in that valley, okay. And so I'm going to get that scripture and uh, Lord willing it be edifying, right, I'm going to go through it. Uh, starting Ezekiel 37 and 1 The hand of the Lord Yahweh was upon me And carried me out in the spirit of the Lord And set me down in the midst of the valley Which was full of bones And that valley is talking about America Right Which a valley is uh, a low land Right Which is America Which is spiritually low uh, You know That place uh, Like in Psalms 23 The valley of the shadow of death Right, that is America, okay, and it was full of bones, right? And that's representing the Israelites that are there that have not awoken unto the truth of the Holy Bible, man, that don't know that they are Israelites, they're just there, uh, thinking that they're in America as just to be slaves, just to be serving the so called white man, you know, the, the nations, and you know, they're thinking that they're black. They think they're African American, uh, you know. They think they're Hispanic, uh, Native Indians, right? Those are the the dry bones. All right. It says, and caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Right. So that's the condition of our people. I right? completely in a spiritually dead state. In a low land, just oppressed. We've come from that state of slavery and slave ships over there. And you had the nations, right, that sold us, right, that oppressed us. They have us there just in poverty and in a, a bad situation, right, in the ghetto and in poverty, just suffering. Okay. And you have our people that are in the condition they're in. Because they are the chosen people of the Lord, right? They broke the commandments. And so the Lord has put them under curses, which they're only going to come out of those curses in these end days when the Lord returns, right? So when you read verse 3, it says, And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, Yahweh, power, thou knowest, right? So can these bones live? And that shows you that it, re it represents that these are uh, of our people, they're in a state of being spiritually dead, right? Because they are represented as bones. And now what's being asked is, can they live, right? So why would you ask if they can live if they're not already alive? But this is all, uh, you know, uh, represents something, right? So I can get a precept. Right, because it doesn't mean that they're actually just in America dead. No, it's talking about spiritually dead, right? So when you read Proverbs 21 and 16, it says, The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So that is the state of most of our people. Right? They don't have the understanding. They've fallen away from the heritage, from the truth. And they are in the congregation of the dead, right? Because you have our people under many doctrines. You have our people that are under many religions, false religions and philosophies, worshipping idols, worshipping false gods, right? They don't worship Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, the true living power, you know, in spirit and in truth, right? You have our people that are under the the false religion of Christianity, right? They believe 
and a so-called white man as being the image of the, uh, you know, a pale faced so-called white man as the image of the Lord and Savior, which is not true, right? All these other um, beliefs, right? Idolatry, um, you know, eating uh, pork and still trespassing the, the commandments of the Lord. That's what our people are involved in, right? And what ends up happening? They end up being destroyed for a lack of knowledge, right? That's what Hosea 4 and 6 says, right? So our people are just in that low estate, right? Just thirsty, right? Void of understanding of these, uh, of the truth, which is the true living water, right? This word, and now you've had even the nations, they've also, Psalms 83 says that they've come together, they've taken crafty counsel, and they, they, they've cut us off from being a nation, right? That the name of Israel will not be in remembrance, all right? They did that through the means of slavery. So they've also even removed certain information from textbooks, from history, which they couldn't remove all of it. But they don't even want to allow certain information to be known. And that certain information would reveal who were the true Israelites. Right? So can these bones live? Right? Lord, hey, thou knowest. Right? Because what is ultimately is prophesied to happen is the great awakening. Which where the small remnant of the Lord's people, the elect, would regain this knowledge and this truth. Right, so us brothers in the faith, right, the elect men, women, and children that have regained this truth, we're no longer dry bones, right? We are now living, all right? Verse 4 says, Again, he said unto me, Prophesy unto the, upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord, all right? So that's what happened. You heard this word. You may have gone uh, past the camp, you may have clicked on a video. And you heard the word of the Lord, right? And you being a dry bone may have been walk, walking and doing all sorts of things. In the past, you may have been eating um, forbidden foods. You may have been um, in idolatry and uh, adultery. All types of sin, right? Transgressing the word of the Lord and his commandments. But you heard the words that were spoken of this, of this book, of the word, right? The truth, which was started from our apostles, a great millstone, right? And the men on down that's preaching the truth, the true doctrine. Verse 5 says, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, power unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. So when we heard this word, the Lord gave us the breath, right? Which means the understanding. We have received the truth with the understanding, right? And, it's, and what happened? We became enlightened. We woke up. That's what they say, right? You woke, you woke up. Well, the ones that are really woke and uh, awakened to this truth are the elect, the ones that have the true understanding of the doctrine, right? The truth. And what happened? It says, ye shall live. Let me get a quick uh, scripture. Right? It's the book of John, chapter 6 and verse 63. Now it says... It is the spirit that qu that quickeneth, right? And quickeneth means to make alive. It's the spirit that does that, right? The, the heavenly Father opens your mind, right? And it makes you alive, right? Through the word of prophecy, right? It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life, right? So it's the words. We're being healed by the words, man. When we heard this truth. That's where we started to begin to heal, right? From the, you know, the, from the, the ways of, of the world, right? The wickedness, right? Repenting, turning back unto the ways of life, right? When you trespass, trespassing against the words of the Lord and you're in the ways of, of sin, you know, you're transgressing, you're doing everything that goes against the word of the Lord. That's the ways of death. Right, that only brings about death because when we were doing that before, well, look what it led to us going down into slavery, us being brought on the, at the bottom of these nations. 
right? Us getting disease, us getting sickness. So now that we've returned unto the, the, the Lord through this truth, right? We are actually living, right? We're no longer in the congregation of the dead, all right? Which is a, um, a very fortunate thing, right? And if we continue and endure, it will be revealed that we, Lord willing, will be of that elect, right? That will be saved in the end from the, the end uh, destruction, man, the, the judgments, right? The fiery uh, judgment, all right? So we are now uh, quickened. We are awakened. We're alive, man. We have the breath. We have the understanding, right? So it says, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, power unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you. And ye shall live. So how did that happen? We heard the truth, the doctrine, right? The curses that was put upon us for breaking the commandments, the um, going into slavery on slave ships, right? Who that fits? How does that apply to the Israelites? And, and that all made sense unto us, all right? We received it, all right? The Lord didn't blind our understanding. He didn't um, close us from seeing that. But you're going to have those that he's closed their minds to not see it, Right? Verse 6 says, and I will lay sinews upon you and, I, and will bring up, up flesh upon you and cover you with skin. All right? And that's all talking about the, the knowledge, right? Because we got the knowledge along with the understanding, which they go all together. You need all of it, right? The knowledge for the doctrine, the, the understanding of the truth, right? It all has to come together. You got to be well-rounded. You can't just have 99% truth. You got to have the full truth which we've been given through the Spirit, right? Which we've been taught from our elders and the, the apostles, right? The other uh, camps and other groups that teach uh, lies, they teach false doctrine, right? And they, they uh, twist the truth, right? They take parts out of the truth, they add to the scriptures and, re and um, remove parts of the doctrine. So they can't have the full truth, right? You, you have those of our people that, They'll have the flesh, right? They'll have the knowledge. They may know that they're Israelites. They'll say, yeah, Israel, the 12 tribes. Yeah, Israel, yeah, yeah, I'm Judah, in it, Judah. But they don't know that the mark of the beast is the microchip, right? They, they, they uh, may say that all nations can be saved, right? Well, hey, amen. then they haven't got the breath, right? So reading on, it says, and cover you with skin and put breath in you, right? And, and yeah, all of that, the skin and the you know, the flesh, you know, our heritage, man. So that's what, you know, you have those, you may even have two thirds, they know that they're Israelites, right? You know, they, they may, um you know, because it's a part of our heritage, you know, the customs that we have, because you'll have like Israelites, you know, and, and different uh, camps on the different doctrines, but they haven't got the 100% the, the true doctrine, man, all right? They just got the skin and, and the flesh on them. They just know that they're Israelites. But it's supposed to go deeper. It's supposed to go further than that. If you're of the elect, right? You would have the true, correct, holy names of the Lord and his son, right? And you would know the, the doctrine, right? So it says, and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord Yahweh. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and behold, a shaking and the bones came together, bone to his bone, right? That's the us being awakened, right? Because, you know, there's this This is being seen, right? Our, the great awakening of the Israelites, the true chosen people of the Lord is being seen all over the world. And it's a great thing that's happening in the earth. People talking about it. It's, it's, we're making, um, it's like history, right? And the great event of our salvation is, is going to be, is going to follow after it, right? The return of our Lord, Right? The, the casting down of the of the lies that's been told who the chosen people of the Lord are and, and the, the of the scriptures, the truth, the true understanding, the true teaching, right? This is like a controversy in the earth, right? So it says, Behold a shaking and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them, right? That's those Israelites that... They don't have the full truth. They don't have the full doctrine. They just may know that the Lord is a so-called black man. They may just know that they're Israelites, you know, but it doesn't go further than that with them, 
right? But with the elect, the chosen of the chosen, they go deeper, they go further. They got their heritage. They know they're Israelites, but they also know the holy names of the Lord. They know the mark of the beast is the microchip. They know these prophecies. They know the scriptures. They've eaten the roll, all right? In truth and sincerity, and in, they're in the faith, and they'll be saved if, enduring unto the end, all right? Verse 9 says, Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh power, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. And that's what we do when we go to the highways and byways, right? The, the, the work of the prophets, right? We just speak this word into the air, right? Into the winds, right? And, and this word, it goes where it needs to go, right? The Lord has this word reach the ears that it's supposed to reach, right? That's how you have brothers that even come in, how you have the elect that are even waking up, Right? Because one point in time, we were spiritually dead, right? We were the ones slain, right? But now we've been quickened, we've been made alive through this word, right? We are truly living, right? And when the Lord returns and establishes the kingdom, that's when we're going to really live on the earth how we're supposed to, right? As royalty, as the chosen. Verse 10 says, So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army. Now, what is it? Where does it also say that in the scriptures? All right, and I'm gonna close out with this last uh, precept, right? Because this truth, uh, the elect regaining this knowledge and coming back unto the Lord through this truth, repenting, right, and practicing the righteousness, that scares these nations, that scares Esau, the so called white man. These Edomites know that that is their end because this is the last of their rulership. Of this wicked kingdom, right? The Lord is going to return and establish a righteous kingdom, all right? And it starts with the elect getting this word, man. This is Revelations 11 and um, verse 9, uh, verse 8. It says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where our Lord was crucified. So that shows you that the Israelites, they would be in a place that is spiritually Egypt, all right? And they wouldn't have the knowledge. They wouldn't know, you know, their heritage. They wouldn't know that they're the chosen of the Lord. All right. But you would have a small remnant that would wake up. All right. And that spiritual Sodom in Egypt is America. Right. Where we were taken into slavery on slave ships. Right. Spiritual Egypt. Bondage. Right. Where are the image of the chosen people of the Lord and, and the Lord himself was X'd out. Right. Portrayed to be the image of a pale so-called white man, which is a lie. Right, the Lord is a so called Negro, so called black man, right? Tribe of Judah. Verse 9 says, And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Meaning, you have these other nations like Koreans and Chinese and uh, Indians, you know, Elam and, and all those nations, they'll come over to where Jake is, you know, the Israelites, Jacob. In America and other parts of the world, you know, and what they'll do, they'll set up shop and sell you pork, sell you cigarettes, sell you weave, all right? And they don't tell you that you are the chosen people of the Lord and you're supposed to keep the commandments, that you're not supposed to be doing the things that they are allowing you to do and enabling you to do. So that's how they're not suff um, allowing you to return to your heritage, man, right? They help to afflict you, all of us. Right, they continue to oppress us. It says, And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. Those two prophets represent the northern kingdom and southern kingdom of Israel, so called um, Latino tribes, Hispanic tribe, um, and then you got the southern kingdom, so called Negro tribes, man, so called blacks, right? So and that actually happened. They actually sent gifts, man. You know, in our slavery, they rejoiced over us, right? You know, hacked us up, uh, body parts and postcards. And, you know, they got riches off of us, sent each other gifts. So there's going to be a judgment for that. There's going to be a punishment. And this is why they fear us regaining the heritage and the truth and returning, repenting unto the Lord. Because when the Lord returns, he is going to bring justice. He's going to bring a payback. Right? Verse 11 says, And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the Most High entered into them. So those 350 years, 
right? While we were down in slavery, we was at the bottom. That that was our time of of going through darkness, man. Going through uh, the punishment, man, for, for sinning against our Lord. So it says after that time, which we're in that time now, right? It says they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. So these nations they fear because we they're seeing the men of the Lord stand upon their feet in boldness. Saying that we are the Jews, going into the prophecies, breaking it down, and we're doing it in the open. All right, we're not doing anything, um, you know, that is that is a uh, of of harm, man. Right? We're harmless, but it's the truth that is cutting these people's spirit. So great fear fell upon them because they know that their end is near. It says, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, "Come up hither," and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them right so that that that's talking about the chariots of the lord man that our salvation that cloud represents the the, the chariots man so-called ufos right and we're going to be beamed up man right lord will and the elect they're going to be taken up to safety at the end destruction of this kingdom by the result of world war three man all right america babylon being destroyed with fire and these nations they all going to be going down man in slavery the lord is going to bring that recompense. All right. Yeah, so yeah, I'm going to end it there. All praises to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahushai, Waha, Rakak, Wadash, Lord Williams, edifying unto you, elect. And with that, I'll say Shalom.